Let's be honest. In today's media climate, it's becoming harder and harder to tell what's real and what isn't. Every day we're bombarded with information that's intentionally trying to change the way we think about our world, our government, and even each other. And the scary thing is, it seems like it's working. But how exactly does misinformation work? And is there any way of stopping it? Historically, there were very few sources of information. That's Scott Shane, a journalist who won two Pulitzer Prizes for his reporting on influence campaigns. You know, there was a newspaper, it came every day and landed on your lawn, and the information in it was sort of framed by the fact that you knew it was the New York Times, it was the Washington Post, it was whatever local paper you subscribed to. And, you know, that came with a, a certain set of expectations and uh, a certain editing process. But now, with the internet, we're seeing a kind of editorial Wild West where we see established news sources presented on the same level as unedited and unverified user-generated content. There are ways in which that's a great thing. I mean, you know, the democratization of information has a lot of positive things about it, but I think it does empower not just uh, people with disinformation, people with extreme points of view. They've always existed, but they didn't have this kind of platform. And those platforms can be massive. Facebook alone has 2.3 billion monthly users, which is exactly why 126 million Americans saw Russian-funded ads in the lead-up to the 2016 U.S. election. Combine those numbers with the inability to tell what's real and what isn't, and it's not hard to imagine why these campaigns are so successful. But successful at what exactly? People think that misinformation is having a huge effect on elections and on politics in general. That's Emily Thorson a political scientist at Syracuse University. People see a news article saying that the Pope endorsed Donald Trump, that it's going to sway their vote, right? In reality, that doesn't happen very often. In general, people tend to seek out information that confirms what they already think is true. And while confirming and not challenging your beliefs might have a polarizing effect on opinions, when it comes to misinformation, it might actually be a good thing. All of those articles about how the Pope endorsed Donald Trump. The people who are most likely to see those are the people who are already supporting Donald Trump. Um, it's the same thing with misinformation on the liberal side and on the conservative side. And any additional piece of information, whether it's real or fake, is probably not going to sway you away from, uh, away from your vote. So misinformation isn't drastically swinging votes one way or another. But the implication of what it is doing could be much more serious than that. My biggest concern is that both the increase of misinformation at an absolute level as well as the really extensive media coverage of misinformation is going to cause people to just tune out of politics. It is very difficult for a democracy to function when people are operating from different sets of information, a different understanding of what's happening in the world to decide that they can't figure out who to trust and who not to trust, what news sources, what politicians, and so instead that they will just give up on trying to learn about politics. That is really problematic for a functioning democracy. Giving up on politics is the opposite of what we should be doing at times like these. When we're confused, we should be learning and challenging even more. So how exactly do we do that? I think one thing to recognize is that information now flows in networked ways. Um, and so as individuals, uh, we all have a role to play in, in shaping our information environments. Uh, to start examining these common tropes of misinformation and have a conversation about what it really means uh, to, um, uh, to spread misinformation, to understand its dynamics, um, and to recognize manipulation when it might be happening. The more that you are educated about the policy issues that matter to you, whether that's immigration, whether um, that's healthcare, the more you know about it, the less likely it will be that you will be swayed or affected by misinformation. The internet of course can present you with this stuff or you get it from your friend on Facebook but you can also click a few times and find out something about the source. Look at what, who's publishing it, does it appear in multiple places, um, you can check fact-checking websites and use those as resources. Celebrate the internet for what makes it beautiful but be cautious because uh, like, like a city um, you can have great things but also very ugly things. And in a world where it feels like our opinions are so different to one another, leaning into that chaos might actually be what leads us to a better understanding of the landscape we live in. 
In general, I think having a diverse media environment is, is really critical to a democracy um, and to hearing from many different voices, hearing from many different perspectives. In this country, if you watch MSNBC in the evening for an hour and then watch Fox for an hour, you may wonder, uh, you know, if if they're uh, in on different planets, but you will have your ideas challenged. Because the future of our democracy relies on us doing exactly that. We have to find out what the facts are. Because while it may seem like we're living in a world divided, where nobody can agree with what's real and what isn't, the reality is, there is a truth out there. And we have the ability to vote based on that truth. And no amount of information, true or otherwise, can change that.